Hey folks, so welcome to the May Birchbox Man Unboxing. Um, I, I think the fact that today is May 8th and I got this box on around the 27th of April and I'm, I'm only now getting around to unboxing it and making the video, uh, I, I think that statement alone should speak volumes about my enthusiasm for both this particular box and the Birchbox product in general. Um, you know. We've had this ongoing conversation where the bigger they get, um, the the more they slip in terms of quality on the lifestyle item. You know, again, I've been a subscriber for four years now. Um, you know, some of the early ones are really awesome, and you know, just lately, um, you know, usually they fall into one of two categories: either things I have absolutely no interest in, or things I can't fit into. Uh, and this was one of those months where there were two things that I could not fit into. Um, you know, so I, I kind of got stuck with, you know, plan C, which I, I can kind of use in the big broad picture, but you know, it wouldn't be anything that's like, oh my God, this is really cool. You know, and the thing is with those early birch boxes, man, you know, they're like, I, I would get luxury items, lifestyle items, like, this is really cool. And now it's kind of like, oh shit, really? Um, so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and open this up and see what we have here. Uh, let's see. This one's for mom. Oh, yes. They're plugging the Mother's Day sales. Hey, look. Save 10% on the Mother's Day gift. Yes. You can give mom the same disappointment that you enjoy every month. Nothing says love like, here, mom, here's a big box of disappointments. Um, I, I actually, several years ago, got my mother a Birchbox subscription, and she told me she only got about half of them. I, I gave her a 12-month subscription because the idea was, if I give her 12 months, that comes through Christmas, that comes through the birthday, you know, that kind of one big gift. And, you know, she she told me about six months in, you know, every month or so, you know, did you get the birch box? You know, and she liked the stuff, um, but eventually she said she just stopped getting them. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, you know, you too can give your mom the, the gift of disappointment from birch box and save 10%. Uh, let's see what we have here. Five years of birch box man. So this is, yeah, so... Those of you who have been with me for a while know once upon a time they didn't print the items on the back. Um, so instead, we come back here and read what the plug is about. Now they're printing the items on the back again. So yeah, I'm trying not to spoil the contents of the box, even though I can kind of see what's in here. But anyway, uh, they, they are having their their fifth anniversary. Uh, you know, apparently the, the downslide began. So let's let's see what we've got. Um, I see a bar of soap. Uh, this is Marlowe's men's men's body so uh, scrub soap, an exfoliating body soap, which helps to scrub away dryness for smooth, clean skin. Made with Marlowe and Blend, our unique formulation of revitalizing extracts. But nothing about the scent profile, and the fact that we have basically it was like Saran wrap on this. Um, I can kind of get the scent profile through it, and really the scent profile isn't that impressive. Um, the, the scent profile kind of smells like any any garden variety supermarket soap. Um, I actually, for those of you who've been watching for a while, I rotated the um, the, the Hudson Made Morning Shift Bar in, and that's just been phenomenal. Um, the the eucalyptus, the rosemary, the peppermint. Uh, that I just, I am loving that every time I take a shower. But, you know, I, I give this a smell, and I'm sure they're probably marking these for, you know, five or six bucks. I, I could walk into a Walmart. I could walk into a supermarket, and this, this basically smells like any of those off the shelf, you know, 25 cents for a brick of 12, you know, three bucks for a brick. Just nothing really impressive here. Um, you know, maybe the exfoliants are good, but from a scent profile, kind of eh. Uh, next, PC for men. We, we've had this conversation before. As a matter of fact, hey, look, a, a package of PC for men from a past box that I just never got around to actually using uh, because, you know, again, I, I was that, that underwhelmed. Uh, but uh, PC for men, daytime protect, broad spectrum SPF 30. So apparently we have a sunscreen here. Could probably use this. Uh, it is. The beginning of summer. Uh, that is the lifestyle item, which we'll get to in just a moment. Two more tubes here. Let's grab this one first. 
Uh, B765 on, Daily Balance Exfoliating Facial Cleanser. Um, let's see if they have foil on the top, and hey, they don't. It's got kind of a light scent to it. Um, nothing really obnoxious, nothing really flowery. It's got some nice grit. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll definitely give it that. Yeah, not bad. Uh, let's see here. So next, uh, Billy Jealousy Signature Shaved Ice Cooling Aftershave. Never really been impressed by a single Billy Jealousy product that I've gotten. Um, that isn't to say this one couldn't be the first. The big issue that I always have with aftershaves is kind of that that alcoholy smell. Um, you know, when I was a when I was a little boy and my grandfather was still alive, Granddad had an electric razor, and he would always um, hit his face with electric shave afterwards. And you know, that's like one of the two smells that when I, I smell, I always flash back on my grandparents. Uh, you know, the other one is my grandparents were like Listerine. You know, the old school, the original Listerine. Anytime I smell that, I automatically go back to Ellisville, Missouri, visiting my grandparents and their house. The other one, now that I think about it, was Safeguard Soap, since we're talking about soaps here. Um, when my, my grandparents, that was just, you know, they, they were, you know, they were greatest generation. They were just kind of brand conscious, brand loyal. Um, you know, and they, they would follow a brand until that brand was discontinued. You know, my, my grandfather, uh, those of you who are really old, um, may remember the uh, Peak brand toothpaste, uh, a baking soda toothpaste. And he got hooked on that, and they just continued it. And you know, <laughs> Granddad losing his toothpaste was kind of like a cat losing its favorite food. Those of you who have cats, you know, you know that when your um, when when your pet loses its favorite food, uh, it is just a hellish challenge to try and find something to replace it. Um, you know, so when they stopped producing peak in the the late seventies, um, man, Grand Grand spent years and years and years trying to find a replacement that he liked. Um, and I, I think he kind of just begrudgingly settled on whatever was available. Uh, but, you know, that having been said, so, you know, Safeguard Soap, um, Original Listerine, and Electric Shave. Those are like three cents that will instantly take me back to childhood and visiting my grandparents. But the one big thing about aftershaves is they always kind of have that alcoholy smell, that medicine-y smell. So, you know, maybe uh, the Billy Jealousy might be... doesn't have an alcoholy smell, but here's the thing. This may be a good thing. This may be a bad thing, depending on your grooming profile. It's got that same generic smell that I've seen with, like, every other Billy Jealousy product. I mean, I, I guess that's kind of a good thing. You know, if you're you're using the hair stuff and the face stuff and the body stuff, you, you kind of have this this funk, this, this cloud of Billy Jealousy following you around. But, you know, again, the... Um, the scent, you know, just not really that, not really that impressive. Uh, you know, I, I guess it would do good as an aftershave. Um, you know, when I when I shave my head, I don't use any kind of an aftershave product. Um, but you know, I, I I guess that day this summer, which we you know, we all know is going to come, I'm going to get bored and I'm going to take this down to something. You know, don't know what. Uh, but you know, I, I guess when I take the razor down, I could probably use this and see if it feels better. But Anyway, moving on. Um, so you know this this was the this this was the 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 last resort, the great disappointment. You know, I, I looked at all those things on, on the luxury item, and it was just like you know, clothing not gonna fit me, clothing not gonna fit me, and the Lucy Emerge inflatable solar light, uh, three in one emergency light. A lantern, a flashlight, and emergency. Lightweight, waterproof, ultra-bright ultra LEDs. SOS mode, battery flasher, no batteries needed. So I, I guess it's running from... Oh yeah, there it is. Um, some solar cells on the back, so I, I guess you charge it up with the sun. Uh, solar powered. So, you know, when, when Donald Trump starts World War III, uh, you know, in those final days before we're all killed off by radiation sickness, you know, you at least have a solar light that, you know, well, nobody else has power. Uh, you know, you, you can die by soft LEDs. Um, 
Charges into eight hours with direct sunlight. Uh, lasts up to seven hours on bright setting. Uh, waterproof, four modes, four ultra bright LEDs. Lightweight, uh, lantern, flashlight. So, yeah, this for me, we're coming up on summer. Um, you know, usually once or twice a summer, we have some kind of a thunderstorm activity where we lose power for a little bit. Um, so, you know, I, I thought, you know, given that there was nothing else, um, you know, I, I am the smallest person in my household. So, you know, the, the clothing options aren't going to work. Um, you know, I, I figure, you know, at least keep this, um, you know, in case we have a power outage. But, you know, again, I, I look at this and it's like, you know, this really doesn't have the cool factor that some of those early lifestyle items and some of those early birch boxes had. Um, you know, I, I still, man, four years later, I still wear the dead Scooby-Doo tie. If you go back to, I think it was March. I think it was, no, no, May. I think it was May of 2014. I got this really cool tie that had like skull and crossbones, but it was like a uh, kind of a Great Dane uh, Doberman Shepherd shaped head. And I, I thought it was like, you know, I, I got the dead Scooby-Doo tie. Um, you know, those LSTN earbuds, man, I still use those. You know, those are, you know, for a pair of earbuds, man, they have survived that long. They have actually out-survived my operating system. Um, you know, they, they no longer work well with the version of iOS that I have on my iPhone. For some reason, when I plug it in, um, something about the cord, uh, that you use to control the volume and the track, it just does not, does not work well. So, you know, I've, I've actually had to replace it, but like on my laptop, they, they work phenomenally. You know, they're still kind of my, um, my, my messenger bag earbuds. Um, you know, so some of those like really early lifestyle items that they had were awesome. You know, there's just like this, you know. I guess it's kind of got a cool thing to it, but, you know, it doesn't even, like, fit into the theme. You know, the theme was like, you know, this is our fifth year anniversary. Now, for one, Birchbox, come on, you know, if this is your fifth year anniversary, we could probably put a couple more things in the box. You know, think about your long-term subscribers, the people who helped you get where you are. Um, you know, this should be an opportunity to kind of go out a little bit. Um, you know, we've got one, one, two, three, four samples plus this. You know, come on, if you're celebrating, do something to celebrate, you know, show us some love. Um, so anyway, yeah, that, that's the, um, that, that is the May 2017 fifth anniversary brush box. You know, just, mm, I, I, I think that my relationship with birch box is going to come to an end in January when the subscription is up, uh, you know, unless... Unless I really start seeing some better stuff in the boxes. Because, uh, like I said, the stuff I'm seeing, man, the last couple of months, you know, there really hasn't been a, uh, a wow moment where I've, I've looked in and it's like, oh, my God. Or I, I haven't had a moment where I have gotten the email and the rush to wait for the selection email is based less on this is the one damn thing out of the three they're offering. I need to get this. And instead is based on, holy shit, this is cool. I have to have this. Um, you know, a, a lot of the last selection emails have been more of that first category. It's like, eh, okay, you know, uh, crap I can't use, crap I you can't use. Okay, you know, here, here, here's the, you know, the, the pity, uh, the, the pity choice, you know, as opposed to some of those early ones when they started the choice program, man, that was the race. It was like, oh my god, I have got to get this item. This item is absolutely cool. And you know, I, I was unafraid to like go to war with customer service, um, you know, and make sure that I got that item. I'm just not seeing that. Uh, you know, the fact that, like I said, I, I've had this box for almost two weeks. It's been sitting over in my computer tower. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, I know it's inside, and I don't really care. Uh, you know, this is probably gonna go on the shelf. Well, you know, maybe I'll put it out in the sun at some point in time this week. Put it on the kitchen counter and let the sun charge it up. But it's like, you know. No, like, major excitement. Um, you know, God, Birchbox really hasn't done any good style or accessories. You know, I, I want to say we're 50 minutes in, you know, and I, I know the Birchbox folks don't watch these. Um, <laughs> so, okay, gentlemen in Spreza Box, gentlemen's Box and Spreza Box, if you are watching this to see what's going on with the cons uh, what the competition is doing, you know, first of all, mad props. Love y'all. That is like some evil genius shit. Um, 
I know that Sprezzo watches the videos uh, that I posted their stuff, and I know that Gentleman's Box watches the videos that I posted their stuff, but, you know, every month I, I post a Birch Box, and it's just like, you know, I, I don't get a single response. So uh, I, I'm going to have my moment of screaming into the digital aether here. Um, I, I would love to see more style accessories, um, you know, tie clips, um, goddamn, even cufflinks, you know, stuff to actually wear. Uh, my God, you know, I, I still, the, uh, my, my um, leather bison bracelet that I got, I, I think in like the summer of 2015, I, I still wear that on a very regular basis, um, you know, so... I'm looking at this as like this is going to be useful, you know, two, three, four times a year when we lose power. Uh, I, this isn't going to be a go to anything. Um, you know, so anyway, uh, Birchbox, God, please, you know, get your groove back. You, you've got about, at this point in time, eight months. Um, you know, come on. I, I want to go back to the old days. Can't we go back to where, you know, to 2013, to 2014? Um, you know, please, please, please. So there we go, folks. Uh, I've gone on way too long about this, so you know here here's our fifth anniversary birch box um with the uh the Lucy emerge inflatable solar light the Marlowe men's body scrub soap scrub that smells almost exactly like something that I could get from any of the Procter and Gamble lines the b seven six by Vaughn. Daily Balance Exfoliating Facial Cleanser. The Billy Jealousy Shaved Ice Cooling Aftershave. And the PC for Men Daytime Protect. Actually, I think I know what's going to happen to a lot of this. So, quick side story and then we'll bail. Um, our, our family, we have a, a Italian restaurant that we go to every Sunday night. Uh, it's just kind of become our... Our, our family, you know, adopted family dinner. Um, you know, most of us, uh, when, when we don't fit certain social norms, we kind of get rejected or neglected or forgotten by our biological family. So, you know, we kind of build these adopted families around us. So Sunday night is kind of like when the adopted family comes together. Um, and, you know, we just get together for, you know, a couple hours on Sunday night, and we have awesome Italian food, and we talk, and we hang out, um, you know, we connect as human beings in a world that kind of seems to be pushing us further and further apart, um, so uh, one of the guys who works at this Italian restaurant, uh, the driver slash cashier, um, confided to me, confided in me about three or four months ago, Kind of an interest in grooming, uh, you know. In particular, I, I was wearing one of the English Laundry colognes. Um, I think it was either Cambridge Night or Notting Hill, and you know, you know, this, uh, the, the boy is straight as a pin. Don't get me wrong, but he kind of did this thing. You know, he's he's behind um, the the cash register, you know, running up the order, and he kind of leans over the register, you know, <laughs> like straight child. What are you doing? Like, what are you wearing, man? What is that cologne you're wearing? Uh, and at the time, I knew what it was. Um, no, no, it, it was uh, Notting Hill or Cambridge. I, I told him, I was like, you know, I, I do these subscription services, you know, and I get these, you know. So what, what I'm wearing is a um, one of the brands that I got sampled. And I remembered back in my gentleman's box, the big anniversary gentleman's box, you know, the, the anniversary box that did it right, Birch Box, um, they included a bottle of English Laundry Rivera. And I, you know, my, my bottle of Rivera is still about three quarters full. So I kind of thought, it's like, you know, okay, this is me paying it forward. You know, I, I love my father. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, I put these on my Facebook page. And, you know, my dad is never going to watch this. I, I acknowledge that, you know, neither of my parents, you know, they, they both complain. Yeah, we have a strained relationship. We have a strained relationship. It's like, I'll put videos up on my YouTube page. You know, they, they won't watch. They won't engage. Um, so anyway, um, you know, my, my father never really kind of did that that fatherly ritual of showing me how to groom. Um, I'm pretty sure I've told this story before. Um, when I started shaving, I, I kind of looked out and got an electric razor because I was too afraid to use a safety razor because I would walk into my dad's bathroom in the morning when he's getting ready and he had like a patchwork of bloody toilet paper all over his face every damn morning. And my thought was like, ew, if he's getting cut, man, those cuts have to hurt. And I'm like, I am not a needle kind of guy. I am a huge screaming pussy when it comes to needles. So I'm going to like, if, if a straight razor can nick me 
and nicks make blood and things that make me bleed tend to hurt. I didn't want to do that. So when I was, you know, 16, and I like got to the point where I had to shave because, you know, I had that Midwestern 16-year-old caterpillar mustache and I was kind of starting to get um, some shadow coming in. Uh, what I actually opted for was an electric razor. Uh, and I, I lived by that electric razor uh, from about 1988 to a very awkward day in the um, spring of 1992 when I went down to see my mother. Uh, she had a, uh, a little condo in Vero Beach, and I was gone for a week, and I forgot my electric razor. And I was like, oh, shit, you know, she's going to bitch at me. I got to shave. She's going to bitch at me. I got to shave. So I, I went out to uh, the local Kmart, and I bought a Schick Tracer razor. And again, you know, those of you who are old enough to remember the Tracer, the, the big selling point of the Tracer was that the head could kind of bend, and the commercial for the Tracer had, you know, a bowling ball spinning, and as the voiceover, the announcer is talking the voiceover, you see the razor coming down, and when it reaches the bowling ball, and pressure is put down, the ends bend over the bowling ball. So I, I kind of had, you know, it was a very tense uh, 15 minutes or so, where I, I had my first wet shave, you know, my, my dad never taught me how to shave. I just kind of had to do this whole thing where, you know, I experimented, did not nick myself. Uh, that, that was my one moment of joy. You know, I was uh, 20 at that point in time. Um, no, god damn, I was 19. Um, anyway, um, dad just never taught me any of those rituals. So, you know, now I'm kind of like, with, with the younger men in my life, you know, I, I'm kind of like the, the grooming guru who tries to show them, you know, the things that they may have missed out on. So, flashback, uh, you know, we're at Stromboli's about, what, three, three-ish months ago, and you know, I've got this straight kid behind the register leaning in and, like, huffing me. And, you know, and under more circumstances, uh, were he more my type, were he gay, that would actually kind of be hot. But, you know, poor straight kid, I just... No, so I was like, child, what are you doing? He's like, what is that cologne? What is that cologne? Um, you know, so the next week, I remember that I had that extra bottle of Rivera that, you know, I was never going to use. Um, you know, I, I still have colognes from, like, the 90s. Um, you know, I, I have, like, they, they, I, I won't use them now because you can't get them anymore, man. Uh, like, you know, I, I have about a quarter of a bottle of Davidoff's Good Life that I just, I don't want to use because they discontinued that, like, 14 years ago. But anyway, so I had this bottle of Riviera, and um, about two weeks ago, uh, I, I so um, the next week, when I, you know, got dressed to go out to dinner, I, I put the Riviera on, and I, I pulled him over. I was like, okay, come here, you know, we're going to do this consensually. I said, you know, come closer. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm fanning in his direction. Uh, you know, it's like, what do you think about that smell? You know, I'm, I'm gesturing like this, trying to get as much air, you know, it's like, oh, that smells good. So I, I, surprised him with the bottle of Riviera about two weeks ago, you know, that big 3.5 ounce. Um, so anyway, what I, what I told him was like, you know what, I, I do these, you know, these, these in particular birch box. Um, I really don't have anything for like gentlemen's or espresso that I would want to get rid of. But, you know, I said like, you know, I got a birch box subscription and I, I'm not going to use a majority of the samples. So I said, you know, I'll tell you what, every couple months I'll, I'll make you a care package, you know, just all the samples that I'm going to use. I'm going to give, you know, whatever I don't want, I will give to you. So I, I think my my little dude at the Italian restaurant is, is probably going to pick some samples up this month. So anyway, I have gone way long on this, and I do apologize, but I commend you if you have stuck through all 23 minutes and 42 seconds at this point in time. Um, so at this point in time, you all know the drill. Uh, go ahead and hit submit. Uh, not submit, sorry. I'm in professional mode. Go ahead and hit subscribe. If you want to um, see these on a regular basis when I update, uh, I do the gentleman stuff. I also do several geek-related boxes. Um, if you want to leave a comment, please, by all means, leave a comment. I, I know I've been neglectful. It has been an insane semester, and I will tell you all why. Well, if okay, if you watched the last video that I posted, you know why it's been an insane semester. But because I wasn't opening a box and snarkily going over the content, I don't know how many people actually did. But, yeah, if you want to know what I've been up to for the past semester, uh, go ahead and watch the, uh, the confessional video that I put up. Um, beyond that, leave a comment. Uh, I will try to respond however you respond to me. Until then, folks, uh, be good. Be good to each other. And please stay safe out there because Trump is a fucking lunatic and so are his followers.